All right, day two of the American trip. Um, see a couple of bags under the eyes. It's been a pretty hectic day. Um, a run through of today's events. I got picked up at around nine, nine thirty. Um, and the first stop was uh, the. Chapel Hill University of North Carolina, which is the private university, I believe it's not the state university. Um, got to see the amazing uh, US college campus, uh, which is obviously on a, on a massive scale compared to British um, universities. So that was, that was great to see, and the reason we went there was to interview a man named Frank Allison who himself is in recovery but also helps young people in recovery while they're at, at the university. Um, he's actually also a student at the uni as well which is really impressive and is set to graduate at the age of 52 which um, really shows that the skills and qualities that being in recovery teaches people really go on to make them do great things. Um, so I filmed an interview with uh, Mr. Allison on the work he does, which took, I think I filmed 25 minutes of him speaking, so it's going to be interesting to try and get some uh, footage from that into the documentary that I'm busy making. And also for the documentary, I have filmed a member of the Healing Transitions program, uh, taking me through the Healing Transitions campus and explaining the 12 steps to me. Uh, I had quite a long conversation with him prior to that, um, basically just to, to get out my uh, ambitions and what I hope to get out of the trip. And basically what I said to him was that I don't want to leave the UK, uh, the, leave America, sorry, and go back to the UK having filmed and created a product that is my perception because I really it's it's shown me that, that really I don't have an understanding or, or a good enough understanding of what goes on in rehabilitation and recovery clinics and places like healing transition so I have no right to say uh, how things happen here and, and how effective they are because I don't have the understanding that these guys have. So what I explained to to the, the guy that I worked with was that I want people who are actually part of the programme to call the shots with the film and, and really um, I want it to be through their eyes and spoken through their mouths because they're the ones that are living this and they're the entire point of why I'm here. So that was the reason that I got him to explain the 12 steps to me and they actually, you'll see it in the, in the final product, but they've actually got a, a symbolic, I'm not sure how to describe it, it's, it's supposed to be symbolic to the 12 step recovery program. It's basically in the center of the campus, it's um, a large, <coughs> excuse me, Basically, it's a large uh, wall, which is supposed to represent hitting the brick wall um, in, I suppose, drug and alcohol addiction. And then it has the 12-step program engraved into the pathway. And then once you get over the pathway, um, having completed each of the steps, there's an actual straight and narrow path into the forest which is obviously symbolic of going on the straight and narrow, which I thought was really uh, simple but really, really effective. And uh, the guy that I worked with was excellent in bringing it out. Um, he, he made it personal by adding his feelings about each of the steps and, and what each of the steps meant to him, etc. And it's something that I couldn't do I could never bring back 
two people who watch my documentary um, in the same way because I don't know how to explain it the same way he can because purely because I haven't, I haven't lived it. So that was my, that's my aim. My overall objective is to show it as real as it can be, um, with without any bias and without any sort of trivialization or any cover up, censorship, nothing like that. I want the real sort of picture to be portrayed. And yeah, it's it's going really well so far. Um, I'm actually sharing a room with. Well, you saw yesterday uh, with Law, which I never thought would happen, but I'm glad ha has happened because um, I previously worked in an institution where I had my own room and it was countless locks and stuff, and it never helped anything. Um, but this this place is it's got a complete open door policy. There's no locks, but there's. I've asked a few people just to check the facts, and they've all said that in in, in recent history. And you talk in the last few years, even there's only been one report of violence and and a couple of thefts of a couple of dollars here and there, and which is insane, really, considering that this this entire community is built up of people in recovery from drugs and alcohol, and also uh, is comprised of homeless people, and without sort of being offensive to either group it is very common in both groups for theft and violence to occur so to have that that such minuscule level happening here and in such an open door policy is, is brilliant and actually um, I wish it was it, it had been more like that during my time in South Africa uh, rather than just being locked away and hoping to be safe it actually um, building a foundation of trust and in, in the long run it's 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 so much better um, yeah that's basically it's been my day it's been working all day up and down the highway um, back to various to to various events we oversaw the first syringe exchange in North Carolina the first legal syringe exchange um, where basically people who use uh, substances that require injection can get access to um, needles and other supplies that will ensure that they are able to be as safe as possible uh, until they're ready to complete their rehabilitation. To the point where they obviously stop using, but it's 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 a very long um, process, so they have to ensure that bloodborne viruses such as human immunodeficiency syndrome, human immunodeficiency virus, and um, hepatitis C, etc., don't spread through broken uh, and um, and dirty needles as it as it would be so um, yeah pretty eventful day uh, not as much leisure but still very very enjoyable um, and yeah it looks set to be another few action packed days of getting out the camera and really just trying to absorb as much of what these people have to offer as I can and also being a good resource to these people so yeah um, this is day two uh, Tuesday the 6th of September so 10 days to go and yeah very positive so far and I hope it continues in the manner that it has alright thank you